Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. What is something that you fear and dread? And I don't mean like you're afraid of spiders, but something that when you see it on your calendar, you are just dreading that day to come. You don't even wanna wake up in the morning. For me, when I was little, it was going to the dentist. The pain, the discomfort, the scary lights, all of that came every six months. So when it was actually the week of the appointment, my life was a nightmare. I'd be counting down the days, five more days, four more days. And then it's the night before the appointment, and you know the drill. You brush your teeth three, four times, you floss for the first time in about five months, 28 days. Maybe you even borrow mouthwash from mom and dad. But finally, you're in the waiting room. And the nice lady is calling out names one by one until your name is called. So you get up, walk through the door, past the reception desk, down the long hallway to be seated in a chair. Now this is sort of a silly example, but do you think that this feeling of dread is anything like the servant in our story had today when he was brought before his king? If it is similar in any way, then it will help us understand the lesson that Jesus is teaching us about forgiveness. God's forgiveness is a countless forgiveness, and it covers uncountable debts. Our king shows us his compassion, and he wants us to show that compassion to others as well. In answering Peter's question about forgiveness, Jesus says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. The king begins with one of his servants who had racked up an enormous debt, embarrassingly huge. We don't know how he managed to rack up such a debt. We just know that it was no small number. Think of it as thousands of lifetimes worth of work, worth of labor. Now imagine that you're this servant. What's going through your mind? The debt has consumed you. And you've gone through all the phases, phases associated with this debt. Panic, fear, worry, the shame of asking to borrow money from friends and family. 
and trying to pretend like it doesn't exist at all. But that number is too big. You see it in your mind, the train of zeros at the end of it is just going around and around in your head, keeping you up at night. But the scariest part is not knowing when it's all gonna be demanded back from you. Until finally, there's a knock on the door. The men from the king, it's time to settle that account. Imagine what is, what is going through his mind now as he's being dragged out of his own home. I'm sure paralyzing fear and worry. Maybe he's trying to come up with excuses and lies that he can tell the king. And then add on top of that the shame and embarrassment as he's being escorted down the street and his neighbors shaking their heads at him. As he is brought to the king's palace up the hill, through the gate, down the dark hallway, and his name is called. Through tear-filled eyes, he looks up and he sees his king towering above him. And then comes the verdict. You and your whole family will be sold as slaves. His heart freezes, his knees give out, his hands find the cold, rough floor. And he starts begging with the king, be patient with me. And then he spits out this unbelievable hollow promise. He says, I'll pay back everything. I promise. Now this servant is still shaking on the floor, maybe even wincing in preparation for what he thinks is going to come next. But his king looks down and he sees this poor, ruined servant. And he says, debt canceled, free to go. And it's almost as if this servant on the floor would have instinctively said, no, anything but, I said, debt canceled, free to go. So what does your account look like? I'm sure most of you have a bank app on your phone that you can scroll through and see the credit card, the debit card transactions. But what were to happen if you were to look at your spiritual life like that? If you, go, if you scroll through this last week and you, and you think, yeah, April 20th, that, that was a bad one. The more you scroll, the bigger that number gets, the bigger the debt you have before your king. And when you realize that, it, it makes you dizzy. It's not a good feeling. And King David was familiar with that same feeling. He writes in Psalm 40, for troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I can't see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Talk about an uncountable debt. What were to happen if the king demanded it all back from you right now? I'm reminded of what happened to Isaiah when he was brought before his king. The seraphim were singing loudly, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. They're singing so loudly that the foundations of the temple were shaking and dust had filled the air. And Isaiah looks up through the smoke and he sees his king towering above him, seated on his throne. And do you remember what Isaiah says? He says, woe to me, for I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the king the Lord Almighty. You and I can say these same words that Isaiah did. We are ruined. We've racked up such an uncountable debt that we deserve to be sold into the slavery of hell, not just for thousands of lifetimes, but for all eternity. And there's no sort of excuse 
that we can bring before God. No hollow promises of, I promise God, I'll make it up to you, I'll be better, I promise. No hollow promises like that. Only God's promises. Debt canceled, free to go. Look up and see your king, towering above you, not seated on a golden throne, but hanging from a wooden cross. It's his heart that's failing. He's the one groaning out as he bears the debt of the whole world. And he's not spitting out excuses and hollow promises. He is confidently proclaiming, it is finished. Your debt is canceled. You are free to go. It's hard to even believe a verdict like that, but it's true and it's yours. Keep that in mind as we go into the next part of the story. Let's not forget that Jesus is teaching us a lesson about forgiveness, and here he shows us what not to do when it comes to forgiveness. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. The servant had been set free and he went and found one of his fellow servants who owed him some money. Now, before we start judging him too much for roughing this guy up, just realize that this wasn't chump change. This was probably about three months wages. So if somebody owed you ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, like put, keep that in mind. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. Notice the echo. Servant number two is using the exact same words that had just been on the lips of the man choking him. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. He didn't hear his own echo. He didn't hear those pleas for patience or promises of paying it back. He didn't see that what had just happened in the king's palace was being played out before his very eyes. He just didn't see it. But the other servants saw what had happened. As we study this story, this is our perspective. We're the onlookers. We see this happen, happening. So what are you thinking at this point? They were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. I think we're right there with them. Who does this ungrateful hypocrite think he is? Now, return to the house of servant number one. There's another knock on the door, down the street, up the hill, through the gate, down the dark hallway, and his name is called again. This time, you wicked servant. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. He handed him over to be tortured. This king is serious about the way that matters are handled in his kingdom. Not only does he make his rich compassion known, but he wants that same love and compassion shown to others. That's how the kingdom operates. Countless forgiveness for uncountable debts. So why couldn't this servant carry it out? Why couldn't he forgive his brother? Two reasons. The first is that he really didn't size up the debt that he owed. And even worse, he didn't realize the rich compassion that his king had shown to him. Learn the lesson that Jesus is teaching you today. We also have a really hard time forgiving people at times. I think it's because we feel some sort, sort of power when we refuse to release someone from those bonds of guilt. 
It's as if we're saying to them, I'm going to let you tread those waters of guilt for days to come. And we're blind to our own behavior, but what if those other servants were looking? You and I are just as guilty as that servant. We don't realize the debt that we've racked up, and we don't fully and clearly see the compassion that our king has shown to us. But there's one more servant that we need to take a look at. Jesus, who made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus was the perfect servant in your place. He showed compassion to all those in need. He didn't refuse forgiveness to those who are mocking him and spitting in his face. You know the prayer that he prayed while on that cross. Countless forgiveness. And that is the same forgiveness that extends to each of you today. For all of your sins, for all of the times that you have been too stubborn to forgive someone from the heart. But doesn't Jesus' answer to Peter still seem sort of intimidating? 77 times. Countless forgiveness. Left to our own effort, we would fail day in and day out. But God has filled your heart with his love. God's love for you for others. And as we live out our days in this earthly kingdom, know the rich compassion that your heavenly king has. Spend some time trying to count the debt that you owed, but don't spend too much time there. I wonder how different our lives would be if we spent every waking moment pondering the love and forgiveness of our God. Show that same love and forgiveness to those who have hurt you. Spread the gospel message of debt canceled, free to go, to all the people that feel that debt. And when your king summons you, and you're standing before his throne, he will look at you and he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God from